So OV101 is the only clinical stage compound that's in development for Angelman syndrome. Uh, it's also known as Cavoxidol. Initially, this was a compound that was studied for sleep or insomnia in adult patients, and that program was discontinued uh, in the past. However, new research since that program was discontinued really showed the mechanism potentially could be in improving uh, what's called tonic inhibition. Uh, and that's something that we know that is, uh, uh, is dysfunctional in people with Angelman syndrome or Fragile X syndrome. So OB101 is the only uh, specific, it's a, it's a, a, a delta unit specific GABA agonist. Um, GABA is one of the neurotransmitters in the brain, and it's, uh, along with glutamate, responsible for a balance in the brain in terms of the distinguishing signal from noise. And tonic inhibition is that ability to drown out some signals that are not important for you at the moment. Um, for example, the whirl of air conditioner sound or background noise and to be able to distinguish what's important and what you really want to focus on. And in some people, that tonic inhibition is abnormal and uh, or dysfunctional, specifically because of an absence of GABA. And so in a state like Angelman syndrome uh, or Fragile X, uh, we have a decreased GABA state. So because of the genetic uh, defects that are found in Angelman syndrome and Fragile X, there is a decrease in GABA that's part you know, that's in the, the brain. And due to that, there is a disruption in the balance of tonic inhibition, which causes uh, the symptoms that you see with both of those conditions. And so OB101 is an agonist or basically replaces uh, and actually attaches to the receptor that uh, your intrinsic GABA would normally do in this case, and then thereby restoring tonic inhibition. We recently announced our phase two study results, the STAR study results, which showed a very a, uh, important indicator of improvement in Angelman syndrome, and that's kind of global functioning. And global functioning as described by a measure called the Clinical Global Impressions of Improvement, or CGII. This study was highlighted in the American Academy of Neurology's scientific sessions um, in 2019, uh, and we're very uh, proud to say that it was chosen by the chair of the scientific committee of the AAN as one of the top three presentations for their top science uh, uh, that was presented at AAN this year. Um, so moving forward, we've had some ex extensive dialogue with regulatory authorities, specifically the US FDA and uh, the German health uh, authority called BFARM. And we are moving forward and have initiated our phase three program. The phase three study is called Neptune, and it has just initiated activities. We are looking forward to enrolling people with Angelman syndrome ages four to 12 years of age uh, for this study, which will be comparing OB101 given once daily versus a placebo. Uh, it's a three month trial and um, we expect results to have uh, results in um, uh, mid-2020, or um, well around, around mid-2020. Um, and uh, people who have completed the Neptune study are then eligible to enro enroll over or enroll in the open-label ALARA extension study. And ALARA will give us information uh, of people with Angelman syndrome in a long-term fashion. So in order to be eligible for the ALARA program, you must have completed an OB101 trial, whether it was the STARS program, which is our phase two, whether it was the uh, uh, pharmacokinetic trial in adolescence uh, that was also completed uh, in the past, or the Neptune study. And every, everybody enrolling into the ALARA program will be eligible to receive open label OB101 uh, for the duration of their participation.